Good afternoon and welcome to your news on TV1. For the News First team, I'm Shehan Ranatunga. First up, here are your headlines. Fuel distribution continues without disruption and suspended CPC workers to face inquiry next week. Trade unions to meet on Friday to decide on strikes as President silent on tax policy. Public sector employees contesting local government election to get April salary. Cabinet paper presented to further reduce fertilizer prices. At least 35 killed after well covering at India temple collapses. Sri Lanka bundled out for 157 runs in the third ODI against New Zealand. Now first up in some news here at home. A special meeting of the Professionals Trade Union Collective is to be held today. According to the Professionals Trade Union Collective, an agreement regarding the future trade union action will be reached during the meeting as they are yet to be given an opportunity to discuss the tax policy with the President. The Professionals Trade Union Collective says that during the meeting, action that can be taken against the government's new tax policy will be discussed. The government will introduce a new tax regime where anyone with a monthly income of over 100,000 rupees will be subject to a tax bracket between 6% to 36%. The professionals continue to point out that it is unfair to impose high taxes while inflation and the cost of living is skyrocketing. On the 15th of March, the group launched an island-wide strike action against the unjust tax regime. At that time, the President's office in a letter informed the Professionals Trade Union Collective that a meeting will be granted with the President. Accordingly, many trade unions decided to suspend the trade union actions. However, the Professionals Trade Union Collective points out that a meeting with the President is yet to take place. Following extensive discussion, the Professionals Trade Union Collective came to the conclusion to implement strike actions from the 3rd of April, which is next Monday. Spokesperson of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Chamil Vijay Singh, has said the matter will be discussed at length in today's discussion. He further said that he once again sent a letter to the President yesterday seeking for a discussion to discuss the tax policy. Meanwhile, the Federation of University Teachers Association says that if they do not get solutions to their problems, they will intensify the ongoing strike. The Government Medical Officers Association explained its stance on the government's tax policy. The government is stalling this matter. As the Professionals Trade Union Collective, we informed the President through a letter demanding a meeting regarding the unjust tax policy. We asked him to present short-term solutions. We requested him to make the situation better for professionals in the country. But we regret to say that there has not been any favourable response till today. Therefore, Professionals Trade Union Collective will have a meeting with all trade unions in the country. If the government continues to extend negative responses as the Professionals Trade Union Collective and the GMOA, we will discuss and announce our actions against these moves by this evening. Now in other news, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation said that the fuel distribution process is taking place as usual without any disruption. Now delays were experienced in the distribution of fuel in recent days following a strike launched by the trade unions against attempts to allow foreign companies to enter Sri Lanka's fuel retail market. The Ceylon Petroleum Corporation said that the fuel distribution process is taking place with security provided by the military and the police. The CPC said that the 20 petroleum workers who were sent on compulsory leave will face disciplinary action on Monday. Among those sent on compulsory leave is the chairman of the Purjana Progressive Workers Union at the CPC, Bandula Saman Kumara. 
Minister of Power and Energy Kanjana Vijayasekara said the draft act with regard to reforming the CEB will be presented to parliament by the end of May. He was speaking on the energy sector reforms at the panel discussion, Economic Dialogue, IMF and Beyond held yesterday. The CEB reforms is something Actually, Harsha is also part of the committee drafting the legal framework for it. So we are hoping that we'll have the draft act in parliament maybe by the end of May. What we hope to do is competition in generation, uh, competition in uh, distribution, uh, power wheeling, those sort of options to be given. What we've introduced with three new suppliers into the retail market is to have a healthy competition, attracting players like Sinopec, United Petroleum, Shell with RM Parks, those will be massive investments uh, and give a massive confidence uh, to the other investors as well. And also the renewable energy roadmap. President will lay it out in May. We've done a lot of groundwork on that, on clean energy, green hydrogen, climate change, all those things taken into consideration. And the most important factor would be in this transformation, I would say the cost-reflective pricing for electricity uh, is a challenge that we have done, but it had laid the groundwork or the foundation for more renewable developers to take part. Ability to CEB to pay back is one important thing that we did with the cost reflective pricing. So with that we hope that 30% thermal power could be converted immediately to renewable energy which will drive the generation cost down because in terms of electricity pricing, 86% is on the generation cost. So we have to drive that down. For that, we are ready to do that uh, when the President announces his roadmap in May. Now, the Sri Lanka Transport Board and private bus operators reduced bus fares by 12.9% with effect from midnight yesterday. The minimum bus fare will be 30 rupees with effect from today. The Director General of the National Transport Commission said that a special program will be in place to monitor the implementation of the price revision. Chairman of the All Ceylon School Students Transport Services Association, Malsiri De Silva, said the transportation charges will be reduced. He said that following discussions with parents, the price revision will be introduced. Now the State Ministry of Provincial Councils and Local Government says that the governors were instructed to deploy Municipal Council Commissioners and Secretaries of Pradeshya Sabhas and Urban Councils on active service 24 hours of the day. State Minister of Provincial Councils and Local Government Janaka Vakumbura said the directives were issued during the discussion held by the committee appointed to look into local government institutions with governors. The State Minister added that he also instructed governors to provide municipal council commissioners and secretaries of Pradeshya Sabhas and urban councils with a special allowance. Meanwhile, the State Minister of Provincial Councils and Local Government said plans have been made to provide the full salary for April to state sector employees contesting for the local government election. Nearly 3,000 state sector employees are contesting the local government election. State Minister Janaka Wakumbura said a cabinet paper was presented to pay their basic salary. He added that it was directed to the Minister of Finance for approval. We informed the governors to introduce the contact details of the commissioners and the secretaries to the people in the area. We instructed them to have the telephone line operating for 24 hours of the day. We instructed them to make the necessary payments to the officers who are operating those telephone lines. As they engaged in this duty beyond 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., they must be paid a fair compensation. Otherwise, they will be discouraged. We are planning on functioning the same way in every province. Minister of Agriculture Mahinda Amaravira said a cabinet paper will be presented in the coming week to further reduce the price of fertilizer. He said measures will be taken to further reduce the price of a bundle of urea fertilizer, which is being sold at present for 10,000 rupees through fertilizer companies owned by the government. A bundle of Bandi fertilizer is being sold at 15,000 rupees through state-owned fertilizer companies. Private sellers have reduced the price of a bundle of urea fertilizer up to 11,000 rupees. A bundle of Bandi fertilizer is being sold in the open market for 19,000 rupees. Yalakanyapi, PSP, Natta Madapora Digavashamani, Nomilimadino. 
During the yellow season, we will provide the required TSP fertilizer free of charge. During the last harvesting season, we provided urea fertilizer for 10,000 rupees. We will reduce it further for this season. I won't tell you the revised price till it's approved on Monday. The price of Bandi fertilizer will also be reduced. The president also agreed to provide relief to purchase fertilizer at a discussion level. We will present the cabinet paper on Monday. We will provide coupons to farmers. There is no need to import rice. Our farming community will produce the required amount of rice to meet the country's demand. Farmers from Rajaveva are preparing to cultivate paddy for the yellow season and they plan to cultivate across 129 acres of paddy land. At the recent agrarian meeting, it was decided to commence cultivating paddy for the yellow season before the 10th of April. However, the Uhana Agrarian Services Office is yet to provide sufficient stocks of fertilizer to the Rajaveva Farmers Union. Farmers claim that the fertilizer that was given was not distributed equally. News first with the people. Up next is Crime Watch. Crime Watch. A 43-year-old father of two was brutally murdered with a sharp weapon in Kodikamam, Jaffna. Sri Lanka police said the victim was killed inside a hut located in the premises of a farmland. The Kodikamam police is conducting further investigations. Crime Watch. A 34-year-old man was seriously injured following an attack using a sharp weapon in Kope. Sri Lanka police said the attack was the result of a heated exchange over a legal matter that was to be taken up in court. The attacker was arrested by the police. Crime Watch. Now here's a look at some more local news in brief. Three people, including a foreign couple, were injured following an accident close to the Kotava interchange of the Southern Expressway. Sri Lanka police said a van plying from Mathura to Kadavata re-ended a container truck on Thursday night, resulting in the accident. A Russian couple in their 50s and the 25-year-old driver of the van were injured and were rushed to the Homagama Hospital. Two people were seriously injured following a collision between a car and a motorcycle close to the Samudhi Bank in Gurugoda, Horana. Sri Lanka police said the motorcycle rider and the pillion rider were rushed to the hospital. Following the collision, both the car and the motorcycle caught fire and the blaze was doused by the Horana Fire Brigade with the support of the locals. Sri Lanka police also said the pillion rider was thrown off the motorcycle upon collision and landed on the roof of a nearby shop. The motorcycle rider had fallen into a nearby garden. The pillion rider was stuck on the roof for a while and then he was moved to the hospital following a valiant effort made by the Horana Fire Brigade and the locals. The commencement of Masters in Energy for Circular Economy offered by four local universities including the Open University of Sri Lanka, University of Ruhuna, University of Moratua and the University of Peradeniya commenced in Colombo. This is a fully online Masters degree program offered for those aspiring for a professional qualification of international standard in the field of energy and circular economy. Another phase of the LOLC Divi Savia program, a community upliftment initi initiative aiming to empower our own citizens, took place today as well. Now, today's program centered around the Kurunagala district. Exercise books and other stationery are being distributed among school children from economically challenged families under the Divi Savia program. This worthy initiative is a collaboration between the LOLC group and the Ministry of Education. The distribution of exercise books and stationary items for students from seven schools belonging to the Kurunagala Ibbagamo Education Zone was carried out at the Ridigama Divisional Education Office. Students from the Buluwala Kanda Primary School in the Ibbagamo Education Zone receive school books and stationery via the Divisavia program. Books and stationery items were also distributed to the students of the Gammana Primary School belonging to the Kurunagala Education Zone.
Now in some news overseas, at least 35 people have been killed and more than a dozen others injured in central India after covering of a temple well collapsed and people fell inside. The incident occurred as devotees gathered at a temple in Indo in Madhya Pradesh state to celebrate the Hindu festival of Ram Navami on Thursday. The Times of India newspaper said the rescue work was expedited on Thursday night after underwater cameras showed bodies floating in the muddy waters of the well. Nearly 140 rescuers used ropes and ladders to pull the bodies from the well after pumping out the water. A narrow path and debris in the well made the task difficult. Dozens of people had fallen into the well in the temple complex and were covered by falling debris. In other news, thousands of right-wing activists gathered in Tel Aviv on Thursday night in support of the government's planned judicial overhaul amid calls to violently confront journalists and left-wing protesters circulate, circulating on WhatsApp. The pro-judicial overhaul protesters met at several locations within Tel Aviv, walked through the streets while chanting far-right slogans and blocked traffic on one of Israel's main highways. Earlier in the night, several thousand pro-overhaul protesters had blocked the Central Ireland Highway in both directions, with police permission holding signs which read Reform Now and the people demand judicial reform. About 300 demonstrators obstructed the bridge after coming up from Ireland's south side. Israel has been convulsed by public protests since January this year. These protests have intensified over the last several weeks over a new law pushed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that seeks to reform the judiciary. The government claims that there is a need to restrict judicial overreach pushed by activist judges. Now, Pope Francis could be discharged from a Rome hospital in the coming days after he was admitted with a respiratory condition. The Vatican said the pontiff has seen a marked improvement in his health after he received antibiotics for a bronchitis infection. The Pope spent the afternoon devoting himself to rest, prayer and some work. He was admitted to the Gemelli Hospital on Wednesday for what was initially said to be a scheduled checkup. A statement from the Vatican said there he was then diagnosed with bronchitis and given an antibiotic infusion. This is the busiest time of the year for Pope Francis with many events and services scheduled ahead of Easter weekend. Still in news overseas, Donald Trump became the first current or former U.S. president ever indicted on criminal charges when a grand jury in the state of New York indicted him on 30 charges of business fraud, including hush money payments to an adult film actress. Trump is alleged to have paid an adult film actress 138,000 US dollars through his attorney for her to stay silent regarding the alleged relationship prior to his becoming president. He served from 2017 to 2020 before losing a re-election bid to current president Joe Biden. Trump denies the allegations. He is expected to appear in court next Tuesday for arraignment. Trump this week officially announced his candidacy for the 2024 election from the Republican Party. Trump issued a statement in response calling the indictment political persecution and election interference at the highest level in history. Now on to some cricket news. New Zealand have won the third and final ODI against Sri Lanka by six wickets in Hamilton, New Zealand just a short while ago. Now chasing just 158 runs to win, the Kiwis did so in 32.5 overs, losing just four wickets in the process. Now earlier, Sri Lanka won the toss and opted to bat first. They were bowled out for just 157 runs. Now with this win, New Zealand have claimed the three-match series 2-0. The second ODI ended without a ball being bowled due to bad weather. It carried, it was parried and then taken. He's such a good slipper. Mitchell, even when he doesn't do so well, he still catches them. There it is again, just like that. Can't do that, should have known. Matthews falls foul of Henry Shipley. He has his first. And that's it from the news desk for now. Thank you for watching.